Okay, I hope you can see me there. Uh, it's been quite some time since I last put anything on YouTube. Uh, this has been due to holidays, getting bikes ready for rallies and so on. Prior to me going on holiday, I wanted to do some maintenance on the machine because I've noticed that when I was milling circular paths there was a slight diametrically opposite uh, each side of a circle there was a, a blemish in the machining mark and I checked out the machine and I was quite alarmed to see that I was losing 3 thou of travel in the X direction and about 1 to 1 and a half thou in the Y direction so I set to and attempted to adjust things I managed to get the Y axis down to reasonable figures but the X axis I just couldn't get anywhere with and I thought that perhaps there was a problem with the ball screw so I took the ball screw out and had a look at it as best you can you have to take out, let me show you yeah you have to take this off, the motor off remove the coupling which is in here slide that off the shaft break this off and then there's some screws on here oh am I right am I thinking yeah uh, you break off the screws back off the the nuts on the uh, end of the ball screw shaft and the whole lot comes out and you you have to remove part of the uh, automatic oiling system in here uh, just so you can get the ball nut far enough back to have a look at which I did and when I checked it I couldn't find anything particularly wrong there's a there's a key in the in the ball chuck that sort of joins two halves of it together there was a little bit of axial movement in that but not a lot and I tightened it up with a screwdriver it's a very small screw as you can see that's the screwdriver I used to tighten it not very good but I tightened that up put it back together again and went about the setting procedure as per Tomac's instructions and I found that I'd eliminated an awful lot of the backlash it went down to about a thou I believe, it, well less than a thou uh, but one thing that I did do which I, I think maybe when I first attempted it I don't know if we can see in here but maybe there's not enough light let me try and get some more light on the subject but the ball screw is quite a long way the, not the ball screw, the uh, gib strip I've managed to get back right out now I think when I first attempted it it probably wasn't far enough out and as a result it was causing too much drag and it, somehow it was confusing the issue but anyway once I got that, that ball screw back together and I tried it again this is the result that I get so I've, there's no this is using a little program that tells it to move forward a thou and backward a thou, or ten thou rather. And here we go. And you can see there it doesn't lose any travel, which is brilliant. Which tells me there's nothing wrong with the ball screw now, so. I can now go ahead and slowly set the, the drag on the on the gib strip which I will do. One of the things which was confusing perhaps well it wasn't confusing me but I used this dial gauge. Now it's in a pretty rotten condition but I don't know if we can focus in on it but look at the accuracy of the darn thing. It, it really was also causing me problems. One revolution equals 0 0.005 inches. Five thou whole revolution. One division equals Point zero 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 five, in other words, half a tenth of a thou. I think that is, which is quite impressive. And as you can see, you, you, you just hardly have to touch it. So I think this was kind of confusing a lot. If I put that back on there, you would probably see there's about three, well, about one, two, three of these divisions, which is. Uh, point zero zero one five one and a half thou. So that's come down a lot. In fact, I, I think it's less than that now. Looking at this, uh, this uh, dial indicator, which is showing that 
it's shown 10 thou travel so I'm, I'm happy with it now so I'm going to try and adjust the gibbs but I'll try and show you that uh, gib I'll just uh, switch off the camera and go get it this is the third attempt to get in here and show you the gib strip and there it is there uh, you can see it and you can see it's well out of the hole they've taken the adjuster screw right out that's lying on the top of the mill somewhere and this is the gib strip here this is the thick end of the gib strip so if I drive it away from the, the camera it'll take up the slack it'll take quite a bit of doing and I'm going to take my time over it and just keep using the program to till I see an increase in the amount of drag until I see some backlash in, incurred and then I'll slack it off very slightly uh, and this is a simple program that I'm using for it I don't know if you can see it on there uh, that tells it just to go forward 10 thou and back 10 thou uh, to give it an optional stop between um, it's 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 a nice little easy program to write so I'll carry on and see what happens well folks I gave up trying to adjust the for the backlash in the system I've come to the conclusion that the ball screw was a US so I've taken the ball screw out and sent it off for refurbishment the reason I've done that is well it's so it's cheaper than buying new and certainly cheaper than importing from the US here so that's why I've done that otherwise if I'd lived in the States I would have just bought new but I don't. Disassembly was very easy. I merely loosen all the screws off the end of the shaft, the lock nuts, the two lock nuts here. Well, disconnect, disconnect the coupling from the shaft, unfasten the tab on the lock washer, back off the two lock nuts, then Remove the four bolts from here and the two taper or the two locating pins. To get it off, you rotate the ball screw and that pushes it away. It takes the pins out with it. Once that's out, uh, push the gib strip along this way so you've got plenty of clearance. Slide the table right along and put some support under it. There's a little bit of support under here and there's only just enough room to get in to get the four screws out of this and once you get those screws out you can lift the sorry I, I should have said to get this off once you've got all that off just gently tap it with a hide mallet and it will pull the shaft through the bearings um, which is done uh, that's off you're left with a ball screw here, four screws to undo here, two loc locating dowels, tapered ones, which are tapped to take a, um, I think it's a 4BA, uh, sorry, M4 bolt. They go in here to locate it, pull them out, remove the four Allen cap screws, withdraw it, and then there's a nut on the end of the, the, the there's a nut on the end, bolt on the end of the shaft with the, uh, the stops uh, that comes off that end, and this comes off the far the, the this end of the the shaft, uh, along with this. I've also made a note of the distance that that is from the shoulder on the shaft, so that when I put it back together, I don't have to worry. And it's a hundred and fifty millimeters from the shoulder that that spacer, this spacer, goes to. So that's uh, that's it disassembled. Uh, the company has quoted me 24 hour turnaround for the bulk screw but I've got a few days uh, where I'm not going to be doing much in the workshop I'm away again so when I get back I'll go and pick it up from Nottingham and we'll see how good a job it is hopefully it, it cures my problems I know I managed to eliminate quite a bit of backlash in a Y axis but I'm just hoping I don't have to remove that one too because that is going to be one hell of a job. Anyway, I have to move the machine out from the wall to get in. As you can see, it's fairly close. And I'll have to take the guard off at the back and climb in to the uh, pit 
if you like all this will have to come off this extra arm oh it's not a job I fancy but if it if it has to be it has to be and if it is worn I'll send it back to the same uh, company if, it, if they've done a good job with the uh, X axis well here we are back in the workshop a few weeks after holidays and time away you may recall from my last video I had tried to eliminate backlash or loss of movement in the Z or X axis and no matter what I did I couldn't get it any better than 2 thou or well I got it down to 1 thou and then it deteriorated and went back up again uh, so I took the ball screw out and I found that uh, there was axial play between these two you could you could rotate them in opposite directions a tiny amount so I tightened up this screw and I think when that screw was tight I lost some of that movement so that improved things a little bit but within a few jogs back and forth it was loose again and there was still plenty of wear or plenty of uh, loss of travel about three thou so in desperation I took it out removed the ball screw and I'd done a, an internet search and I found a, a company who uh, offered a service it for me and a very quick turnaround and I now notice I cannot move this at all and uh, there's absolutely no or well, there doesn't appear to be any movement between the two halves of the ball nut so the next job will be to put it back in and try it again well, go through the assembly process. The first thing you have to do to get this ball screw back in is it will clean up the surfaces of the the base for the ball screw housing. Place the housing over the end of the ball screw and fit the soft stop or whatever it is onto the whatever they call it the the stop onto the end of the screw. Uh, clamp this in a in a vise carefully and tighten this up so it won't back off in service it shouldn't anyway but uh, it's there and I've also before I took this off I measured the distance that it was from the shoulder and uh, I've put that back on and this will go on but first of all thread it through put this on and then we slide it into into here and let the uh, housing sit there uh, we place the taper pins back in the the doors in the the holes that they came out of and I've kept them in the correct position so the same dolls go in the same hole so we'll we'll do that well there we have the ball screw housing in place all the four the four uh, cap screws are fully down and the taper pins are pushed in as far as I can get them uh, I checked that there was no movement on this at all before I put the screws in are the cap screws uh, and I've tightened those up thoroughly so the next job is to slide this along to put the the ball nuts into the housing and then screw the six uh, screws that go into there plus the oiler uh, you can see here in order to get this out you have to remove these screws to move this out of the way because you can't get the housing clear you can't lift it you can't lift the ball screw above it with the housing on it till this is loose that goes back after we've done this so that'll be the next thing one thing I've noticed you have to be careful with getting in the, the oil feed if you have got well you'll all have this oil feed system is to make sure that the ball the ball nut is rotated such that it clears the dovetails or cl clears the casting at the end of the table and uh, you can see there I don't know if you can actually see much here at all but there's the oiler and back along here is the which you can't really see but you can just make out the edge of where my finger end is of the table and it should be just about clear but I'll be very careful when I put it together and if it doesn't fit that way then the only option would be to to run the pipe underneath the ball screw and attach it at this side so we'll see what happens well there you can see I've slid the table a bit further along I've got the the motor housing etc the coupling housing on on the shaft and it's still got a half inch to go and I have to tap it up with 
with a hide hammer um, I prefer to hold on to that so I'll not do that again because it's uh, bouncing around I don't wanna, I've already had problems with ball screws I don't want to break this one so we'll, we'll uh, knock that on and I'll show you how it's closed up well there's the ball screw that, that's uh, the housing for the uh, stepper and coupling on the shaft you can see now it's closed up and you can see there's a lot more thread there uh, I almost forgot this uh, and of course that's the thing that imparts a preload to the bearings via the the little nuts here which are really awkward to tighten and so on in fact I think tonight rather than take any risks I'm going to make a special clamp to go on the end of the shaft with a handle on it simplified I believe uh, Tomac do this as part of their kit for the tool set I managed to purchase a couple of C-spanners that fit and also one of these gadgets here so later today I will once I get this made I will uh, we'll see how it's used because I think it's quite essential that you grip that shaft properly and the problem is of course it's, it's precision ground and you don't really want to damage it I've been holding it with pliers and so on and I'm not happy about uh, doing that so I'm going to uh, change it and make, make sure I hold it properly okay well about an hour's work maybe a bit less some scrap from the, the stock cupboard and uh, bit of manual milling in the manual mill and I've made this tool which should go onto the end of the shaft here uh, you can just see it inside there which will enable me to adjust the preload and tighten the two lock nuts up and put the the tab washer in and fold it over uh, without too much uh, of a problem in terms of having to hold the shaft with pliers or any other makeshift tools. As I say I think Tomac do one, it's just import duties and uh, time or uh, pressing so I thought I would get on and make my own. Okay well now I've got the two as you can see the two nuts are on uh, the tab washer I've folded over uh, there's no mention of the tab washer in the instructions but it's there if I point at the end of the uh, at the end of it you, you lose sight of it but you can see the tab where it's bent over uh, just in that that slot there on the left you can just make out the end of it uh, that's where it's bent over the nut ten uh, the, the tightness of the nuts is very difficult to estimate but uh, what I found was with my homemade tool you can induce slip quite takes a fair bit of torque but not, not a massive amount so I figured that tying it open till I induced slipped, slip and then I nipped up the, these screws one more time which held it a little bit more give it a bit more tightness a uh, bit, bit more tightening until it slipped <coughs> then called it a day at that and took the tool off put the second nut on with the washer uh, tighten that one up against that nut with the same amount of torque and it looks okay to me. I'm going to leave the tool on so that we can adjust the gibbs and have a handle to play with and I can guess when it's getting that little bit more difficult and when it's not in terms of torque coming on so I'm going to try that approach next okay well I've connected everything up and I've done my checks and I think I'm within spec now uh, that is losing half a thou of movement oh, that's the best I've had yet